Hello and welcome back to the Goes T Virtual Social. I'm Jasmine Hopkins with NASA Communications, and right now we are just hours away from launching the next state-of-the-art satellite from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Today I'm joined by a couple of experts ready to talk to you about the mission. First, we have Steve Voles, Assistant Administrator for NOAA Satellite and Information Services, and we also have Dr. Thomas Serbukin, Associate Administrator for NASA's Science and Mission D Directorate. So thank you both so much for being here with us today. Uh, our first question is going to go to you, Steve. Uh, we've been hearing about uh, quite a bit about the GOES T in the last few days and what it will do. So how does NOAA and NASA work together on GOES T? So the NASA NOAA partnership is really a, a partnership of equals who bring different skills and but complementary skills to the mix. So the program itself is, is really a badgeless environment where the teams, if there's a NOAA program director and a NASA deputy program director, but NASA, NOAA brings, uh, I would say, sort of the, the mission mandate for the weather mission to the team, to the partnership, and the products and services background. NASA brings the, the extensive background in space science and space flight hardware and de technology development and in program management and execution. And together, we're able to put together a really outstanding um, world-class team that we're working on a day-to-day -day basis with bringing the satellites to development and then to operations, where NOAA does the operations with NASA there as the backup and and uh, repairs and corrections if we have any issues with the satellite on orbit. It's a great team. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like a fantastic partnership we have here. Our second question is going to go to you, Dr. Z. What strengths do each of these agencies bring to the table? So for me, you know, besides the fact that there are two agencies mm -hmm. uh, here, I just really also want to point out that this is really Team USA with all the contractors that yeah, also are, are working on this, including the spacecraft, which is is really critical. So it's it's the strength that we're bringing to the table, of course, besides the Im amazing understanding of the operational community, which is what NOAA does, is really the research community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the data that are uh, saving lives every day in uh, weather forecasts, of course, are also data that are really the subject of research. We're trying to understand how fires arise in the western part of the United States and what mm -hmm. we could be doing ahead of it, trying to really understand how the planet works in this new changed way, which is changed by climate. So, so for us, the adding of science and research mm -hmm. is really one of the key elements besides the other pieces that uh, Steve already mentioned. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Z. I like that you said Team USA. We're all in this together. So our third question will be for both of you. Uh, what do you hope for the future in terms of this interagency collaboration? And Steve, we can start with you. Sure. So just following up on what Thomas just said about the, the process understanding, we're trying to understand the whole Earth as a system. And really, it requires more than just a couple of weather satellites or a couple of research satellites. It requires the combination of research and understanding to understand those processes and the operational satellites to continue to make the measurements over a sort of the lifetime of the phenomena we're trying to understand. So after goes T, which good luck today when a good on the launch, We've got another polar satellite coming up next fall, which is another NASA NOAA collaboration. But really, we're already planning the generation to follow, which is GeoExo, which are next generation GO satellites, which are going to have not just weather, but also ocean color observations, atmospheric composition, and really hyperspectral imagery of, of the atmosphere. And, um, and I'll let Thomas pick up on this one. The other one is the, the, uh, the space weather uh, objectives that we have as a combined organization as we, we, just, as we understand the, the physics of the sun and how it's affecting our lives here on Earth. So we have portfolios of observations and really are looking forward to expanding the needed observations in space weather. But over to you, Thomas, if you want to, for your perspective. So we're a technological society, right? Of course, we feel weather when it's raining on us. We don't feel space weather. But make no mistake, it's part of our lives each and every day. And especially as the sun is moving towards solar maximum, uh, you should be aware that the sun is waking up right now, moving towards solar maximum in three to four years. And uh, during that time, the kind of uh, threats that come from space weather are increasing substantially. More than half of the spacecraft that are in orbit right now and operating were not in orbit at the last solar maximum. And there's many of them are from commercial partners that are really doing mm -hmm. this for the first time. So uh, both because of the changing planet and kind of the abundance of severe weather, but also because of space weather, the future of our collaboration is important and remains important as we go forward because uh, uh, that kind of warning and kind of supporting the community is really what we do and what we do best together. Right. This is certainly a situation where we're launching from Earth for Earth. So very exciting to get those answers from you. Uh, so in terms of launch today, how are you feeling? Absolutely excited. This is great. Uh, the sky is cleared. The clouds are gone. The wind is picked up. But, you know, 
we're the weather satellite, so we can deal with some weather. We're really looking forward to the launch today. Go Go's T for sure. Uh, go Go's T. Nothing That's else it. to add. Fantastic. And you can keep up with this mission on social media using hashtag ready to goes. And we also invite you to tune in later to NASA TV at 4 p.m. for our pre-launch coverage. Thank you so much for joining us today. And go Go's T.